ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ನಮಃ ಗುಡ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇ ಡೀಡ್ ಎನ್ ಆನರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ನೋ ಯೋ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟುಡೇ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ಯಾರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಮೈ ಗುರೂಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ಲಿ ಗುರು ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಜಗೋಪಾಲನ್ ಗುರು ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಪುಲಗಲ ಸಿಂಗಮ್ ಗುರು ಪದ್ಮಾ ರಾಘವನ್ ಗುರು ಎನ್ ಜಿ ಗಣೇಶನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ಮೀ ದ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ 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 ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೈಲಿನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಈಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ದೆನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವಯಲಿನ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ So I've broken this Know Your Instrument series into a few parts. And the first part I would like to talk about is how does one speak through the violin or maybe I can just tag it as how does one speak through the strings, right? So I think the first, first thing that we need to understand is the mechanics of how the violin works. And I always use this analogy to share with the children uh, or students of any age. If you recall the older um, um, older methods of communication or even as 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 kids we used to uh, do this little science project where we will put two cups and a string in between and we will speak through one cup and that string will probably go a few meters across and the other person will put it at their ear and they will actually be able to hear what is being said because of the string and this is essentially the principle of 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 the sound vibration right and that's exactly what we are witnessing on the violin right so by definition you would be able to see it as per the sound of your voice vibrates through the can in the earlier example and this causes the strings to vibrate our ears collect the sound of vibration sends them to our brain then we hear the sound all stringed instruments make sound and notes by vibrating musicians make their strings vibrate by rubbing the bow against them striking them or plucking them most string instruments have something that amplifies the sound and makes it louder this is called the sound box or the resonator the sound box is often the largest part of the instrument or the body of the instrument when the strings vibrate the vibration is picked up by something called the bridge the bridge then transfers the vibration to the sound board which vibrates and uses the sound box to amplify and make the sound loud enough for people to hear so what i shared earlier about how string instruments operate will be seen as i take you through the parts of the violin which i in fact mentioned so let's talk a little bit more about that now that we know how a stringed instrument emits sound let's go directly into how the violin works so i'd like to share the parts of the violin we have the scroll of the violin these four black looking sticks are called the pegs the pegs generally hold one end of the strings these are the violin strings by the way okay so um we have the violin strings here and right below the violin strings you see this black colored board which is called the fingerboard and this fingerboard then goes into the entire uh, sound box of the violin if you remember in the earlier part i have mentioned about how the strings pass on the sound to the bridge which is then passed on to the body of the violin the sound box so this is the bridge and this is the tail piece where you see quite a bit of screws on the top which also act as fine tuners for the strings if you recall when i shared about the peg earlier the peg is used to tune the strings probably at a coarse level and then to get a finer adjustment on to the 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 pitch of the violin of the string then you use your fine tuner 
Of course, there are other parts on the violin, which is the chin rest and the shoulder rest, which can be necessary or may not be necessary depending on the way how the violinist is sitting and holding the violin. So generally, these are the parts of the violin. Of course, without the bow, it would be hard to play the violin. And hence, on the bow, you have horse tail hair, which is essentially the white, whitish part. And the reason probably why it's slightly white is because of the application of the rosin onto the bow. And then we have the stick as well as the screw which is used to adjust the tightness of the bow hair. So these are, this is essentially uh, the look and feel of the violin and, and the use of its parts on the violin. It's a light instrument. Um, what else can I say about the violin? Um, this is one out of the four in the family of, of uh, the, the violin up to cello family. So essentially there is violin, viola, cello and the double bass, right? So this is, this is kind of like in an orchestra equivalent to the soprano singers if you wanted to draw parallels to a choir filled with uh, alto, tenor, bass and the soprano singers. So the violin is probably covering that range, right? Okay. So now let's talk about how did the violin come in into uh, India, right? We all know that the violin is generally a Western instrument. It originated uh, from the Western side of the world. So how did it actually make its way into um, India? And what actually brought violin uh, to where it is now, where we see violin as a standalone instrument in the Carnatic uh, uh, world or the Hindustani world. Let's explore. The violin may have been introduced in, uh, to India around 1719, 1790 by military bandsmen in uh, East India Company, many of whom were Irish. Balu Swami uh, who lived between 1786 and 1859, learned the instrument from the army bandmaster at Fort St. George in Madras and developed new playing techniques to suit Carnatic music. He became a court musician in Atayapura. Either way, the instrument was quickly found to be ideal for use in Indian classical music, which, with its closeness, in timber and range to human voice. The initial Irish connection is supported by the name of one of the earliest prominent Carnatic violinists referred to as Fidel Punasan. So now that we know how the violin made its way from the eastern side of the world all the way into India, how did it land on Baluswami Dikshitar's hand and Fidel Punaswami's hand? Let's also understand a bit more how did this transcend from India made itself through syllabus structure guidance and now is is an is is an art which is played across the whole world right so what I plan to do is I plan to share a bit more on how this beautiful instrument can be connected to Carnatic Carnatic music so um, as vocal students, most of us know the typical sapa sa when we begin. The Western violin is tuned to a fixed tuning of G, D, A, E. The thickest string is G, resembling the lowest note, up to E, which is the highest note. In Carnatic music, this is not how the violin is tuned. It is usually tuned to sa pa sa pa now, generally, in across many barnies, we see violins being tuned between the range of 1 up to 3 or even 4. 1 meaning Murukatte, 4 meaning Nandukatte, and 
when we look at that on the, the piano or a keyboard, this refers to C for Urkate and F for Nandikate. And this C and F are literally the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, right? So Do for C and Fa for F. So now, what I have done is I have tuned my violin to three, Mundrukate, which is E. So you will be able to see my Sa at E, Pa, Sa again at E, and Pa, which is the corresponding note B. So that's how the violin is tuned. Now, holding the bow requires a bit of uh, getting used to because it's, it's all about, it's actually quite scientific. You need to be able to balance the bow and you'll be able to then hold and be able to get that, you know, um, grip of it to be able to assert some pressure when you want to play loud or lift off the bow when you want it to be soft and many other techniques are there. Now, specifically on the violin, since the sa string is tuned to sa, right, there. And the pa string, so that gives us sa and pa. And we also know, as I shared earlier, the bottom two strings also are tuned to lower sa and lower pa. So um, now let's add, you know that the lower sa and pa denote the lower octave and this sa and this pa denote the normal octave, the median octave. So we're going to now know that between sa and pa we have Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma and at Pa you continue by playing Pa, Da, Ni, Sa. So in, in vocal classes generally we know that there is Sa, Ri, Ga, Ma and you have Pa, Da, Ni, Sa. How does that, uh, how does that get on the violin? So that's why you have your um, index finger, middle finger, ring finger and the pinky on your left hand to do that notes. What happens? Let's say when we play at an open string of Sa. So that's the Sa string. And if you recall the logic of the vibration of the string, as the distance gets shorter, the pitch increases, right? So that's the same logic. We introduce the index finger to put there on the sa string and hence you are reducing the length right and that becomes do you see the tone change so so there's a switch from sa re now i know that i want to get to ga and i play Using the middle finger, I've placed my finger on a slightly higher note to reach Ga. And then I bring my ring finger on. That gives Ma. So if I, if I were to play one after another, Right? So you are able to see as I'm reducing the length, effective length of the string, you can actually see the pitching is increasing. I'm moving from one swaram to a higher swaram and it's ascending in nature. And now let's explore pa. So I did Pa, I went to Da, I went to Ni, and I finally touched High Sa. So this is the seven notes plus High Sa. When you 
descend, it is a matter of slowly removing each finger So if you had realized, when I played Sa all the way up to high Sa, if you realized the fingers, you would have seen clearly some gaps in between, right? As I moved on. But what are these gaps actually for? Now, we need to understand that the ragu which has been selected for the very beginning lesson, Sarli Varese, is Maya Maragavla which has a Re1, Ka3, Ma1, Pa, Da1, Ni3 and a High Sajjava. We are also aware that each Swaram has three positions. I think for ease of understanding, I'm just going to stick to the one and two convention. So each note has two distinct positions. So since I was playing Re1, I had to give two finger spaces before I put the ka. And from ga to ma, it is adjacent notes, hence no space. Similarly, pa to da, two finger spaces and I placed my knee and finally the sa. So this is a quick overview on the finger positions from sa all the way up to high sa. So now, let's talk about how do we then bring this knowing of swaras into maybe just a sample of, uh, let's take a, a popular um, short Gita, which uh, in today's session I would like to share, and probably let's take Sri uh, Gananatha. Malahari Raga. Um, it's the first Gita in praise of Lord Ganesha. So we know the Swaras are Shri Gananata Sinduravarna. So let's try it. As for what I shared earlier. If you recall, Ma is my ring finger. So I'm going to try. So that sounds quite similar to how the vocalist would do it, right? Shri Ganata Siddhuravana Just a sample on how the first Gita is done as part of this Know Your Instrument series um, on how Swarams translate to melody. So now, knowing how the song is being played, often as music students we always wonder how do we actually structure our practice? And you know the most common question is how do we motivate ourselves to practice? I, I recall clearly how my parents 
used to motivate us to practice and especially the teachers. Now, um, of course, the most important one is, is to have like, you know, a competitive partner next to you to keep you uh, on your toes and, and you know, that's how my brother and I used to practice. But of course, um, now with the advent of YouTube and all of that, you have so much of reference points which, in which you can use to, to listen and, and play together with, right? So that's one, one key technique you can use. The other most important um, idea, I would say, is as, as violin students or even actually as, as music students, I feel one of the most important lessons which we need to pay a lot of uh, attention to is the Tattu Verisais or um, one of the teachers who taught me, uh, Vitwan and G. Ganesan, he used to term it as Sadhaga Saraligal. So he created a, a series of patterns which then you know uh, arranged itself and he made us practice this repeatedly. So one good example was you know in Tattu Verisai we have Sarji Saga you notice the patterns, right? So when you sing it, it goes and so on and so forth. Now he then went on to create as one pattern. Then another pattern would be so when we used to play these patterns at um, at different speeds in different ragas, that gave that you know flexibility to the finger, that gave that sense of you know confidence to the finger. Right? And that actually trained the ear to be able to recognize patterns really quick. One very important skill a violinist would need to have is the ability to listen. Um, and that's seen when violinists are accompanying vocalists, especially. Or even when violinists are playing for dance programs, Bhagavatam uh, Kacheris, or anything, right? So, the violinist is expected to be able to listen to the vocalist and literally take on the uh, melody within the split socket on the violin and being able to play. Now that requires tremendous amount of uh, the ability to listen and translate it into fingers and through the violin out within a uh, very short time. So um, this varices which so many variations in between will tremendously help and it, it's indeed uh, uh, one of the main reasons why I'm able to uh, uh, accompany to the very little I can. So um, this varices actually bring me fond memories of how Vidwan and Jiganesan used to teach us. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just give you guys a sample. So in the Tattu Varisi we commonly learn And it goes all the way up to and then it starts to descend. So with one engineer, what he, he, he did uniquely is he created his version which was So, in a way, this was already setting precedence for instead of just uh, a varisai within the octave, 
it was a varisai which went to the lower octave and the higher octave so there were even varisais in which it starts off with sarisa pamaga sa pamaga sa varisa ni vega vinda so can you imagine as you reach the high sa it will go all the way up to high pa and some varisais were focused in the lower octave so this actually helps the violinist to develop and be able to recognize patterns very quickly so when a vocalist were to play or were sorry when a vocalist were to sing ta ta na na ta na na i'm taking an example of uh, kalyani right ta na ta na right so how would the violinist be able to So when the vocalist is singing, da 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 da, in the violinist mind, immediately is okay. He touched pa, 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 da, pa, pa, ga, re, right? Da 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 da, pa, pa, da, pa, pa, ga, re, and of course the gamakas come in between. to make it more beautiful right so the swaram re ga ma da ma da ma ga re re sa ta na the ability to be able to listen as you listen while you're enjoying the music you are immediately catching the notes and sometimes when the vocalist does it in other rhythms the ability to note that that change the ability to detect the changes in the swaras the ability to know that oh the vocalist has has now moved into another rhythm so these are very critical and hence the practice of uh, those sadhana sarligan should not just be limited to one particular rhythm but it should actually cover a few rhythms um we can even take the 72 melakarta rhythms as a basic uh, requirement to explore into all these varisais and try at least two to three speeds on each of the varisais in each of these rhythms that will give an amazing grip and grasp of how to play the swarams how to recognize and how to hold that melody so thank you once again for sitting through this know your instrument series it has been uh, a privilege to be able to share this series with all of you i thank sugam karnataka for allowing me to do this and uh, hope to see you all soon take care thank you so much and see you all